Well, if you thought Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was going to step up for his fellow NBA players, think again. He is doing the exact opposite. We're going to say and uh, get into all the details. First, guys, if you could, please like this video, share it, hit the bell, subscribe, and wear the glasses because I'm blind. Also, consider making a generous donation here to our ministry. We're demonetized on YouTube. You guys can help us out through PayPal or Patreon. Those links down below. Through Patreon, guys, you guys can get bonus content. Also, you can comment censorship-free, send me direct messages. It's a great way to stay up to date with everything that I'm doing content-wise. Another big reminder, sub to me on Rumble. That's our backup in case we're kicked off of YouTube. We're already posting there. So go check it out. All the links are down below. A big thank you to everybody already contributing. And for those of you thinking of doing so, thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. So Jabbar was on with CNN and Don Lemon. So... A, a fitting pair, right? Lemon and Jabbar. And Jabbar was talking about the fact that the NBA does not have a Rona jab mandate in place for its players. Now, they do have one in place for all of the staff and also the referees, but not for the players. But things kind of took a little bit of a turn in August when a couple of arenas there in California and New York said that, well, they wanted... The home players for these specific teams, Golden State Warriors, also the New York Knicks, and the Brooklyn Nets. All those arenas that they play their games in, those players would be required to have the jab in order to be eligible to play in home games. Now keep in mind, there's over 40 home games a year in a regular NBA season. And I'm assuming an 82 game season here. I know they've recent years with everything with the Ronas and the shutdowns and all that, they've had some reduced seasons. But in normal seasons, that's what it is. So this then brought out Andrew Wiggins. And I did a separate video about this. Some of you may have seen it. Player on the Golden State Warriors who put in for a religious exemption from this because he says, oh my gosh, this is, this is my team. This is my arena. He had no clue about this at all until August when the city of San Francisco decided to put this in place he puts in a religious exemption. He didn't want nothing to do with this. And he said this one against his religious beliefs. They denied the exemption. He was denied. They didn't say why. They just said, nope, we're not accepting this. So he's looking at right now, potentially sitting out for half the games this season. All of his own home games. What's the point of him even playing? So this brings me to the comments made by Jabbar, who told Don Lemon that he says that any player who does not get the jab should be kicked out of the league. Altogether, gone, banned, banished. Because obviously they're too selfish. They don't care about their teammates. They don't care about their coaches. They don't care about the fans enough to keep themselves safe. There's that word safe again. By getting the jab. And then he repeated the usual lines that we always hear. These are safe and effective. Do your research. Well, here's the thing, Jabbar, they are doing their research and it's proving to be everything that's the exact opposite of what you with Lemon and all your other friends in the entertainment business, you know, your celebrities, all of them are saying. They are doing their own research. He was so angered by this, by the fact that these players, so many of them, want nothing to do with this job. They just want to play basketball. That's all they want to do. But Jabbar, over the years, has proven himself to be a leftist and has gone totally, you know, the side of the Democrat Party, you know, repeating all of their talking points. They're basically using him, and it's sad. You know, this is a guy who is a Hall of Famer, a legend in the NBA, and he's now nothing more than a shill for the Dems and pushing the jab everywhere he goes. Who is he to say that these NBA players don't have a right to make a living? Now, look, I know a lot of them, you know, the last year or so, everything with the BLM and the you know, with, you know they, they painted the thing on the, the courts and everything like that. And look, I don't support that at all. But some of them are good people, okay? Some of them are good people. Decent, you know, they didn't agree with any of that. They just want to play basketball. Well, this brought up Kyrie Irving, player on the, uh, on the Brooklyn Nets, was absent from media day. Hmm, wonder why. Well, he was asked about the possibility of him taking the jab. And really, they want to know his jab status. Now, he had kind of uh, took questions remotely because he wasn't present there. 
and did not disclose his jab status, but said that he wanted to keep that private. Didn't say whether or not he had it or whether or not he was going to get it or not. But that was something he wanted to keep personal between just him and his teammates. So I'm thinking, obviously, he probably doesn't have it. And he probably doesn't want to get it, much like Andrew Wiggins over on the Golden State Warriors. So this question was brought up to Jabbar. And he said he could not accept that statement. <laughs> you, what do you mean you can't accept the statement? You couldn't accept Irving's statement? Why? Because he doesn't want to tell you? He doesn't want to disclose to you his personal information? Who are you to get his information? What makes you think just because you're some Hall of Famer, you deserve to know? You don't deserve anything. These, the, the arrogance of some of these people is just unbelievable. Jabbar says, we're fighting a war right now, and the best weapons we have against this war are face diapers and jabs. Remember, safe and effective. These people, let me tell you what, they are going to be the ones that march you straight to the Antichrist. You mark my words on that. You mark my words. What does the Bible say about when they say peace and safety? Then what? Then comes sudden destruction. They are leading you down a path to your own destruction. If you follow them, if you listen to their words and you do what they say, and they try to make you feel bad as if you are getting people sick by not going out there and getting the job, but they are complete liars. They are liars. Who is the author of lies? Who is the father of lies? The devil himself, which is who these people follow. You have to look at things from a spiritual perspective. When they say these things, it's coming from somewhere. They're tapped into it. They're his followers. All in the name of public health. It is a genius plan, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? But you know what? Who also has a plan is God. And his plans are greater than any other plan that the enemy could ever put together. It's why we do these videos. We talk about the prophetic news headlines going on around the world because we are in the last days and Jesus is coming back soon. But are you ready to meet him as your Lord and Savior? That's the question I have for you today. If not, we want to lead you in a prayer right now so you can accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. You can put this prayer in your own words. I'll give you the steps you need to bring that prayer before the Lord. Here's the first thing you want to do. It's acknowledge. Acknowledge that you're a sinner. Something that we all are. But God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for the sins of all the world. He died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from your sin. And not just to say you're sorry, but to turn from a lifestyle or a habit, whatever it is in your life that goes against the word of God. You ask Jesus to forgive you, he'll wipe that sin away, the Bible says, then he won't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you, there is no greater decision you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. I pray you make that decision today. I will have more for you guys on this down below. You can let me know your thoughts. Don't forget the links to donate to our ministry are there as well. It is a great blessing if you can help us out. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.